The goal of this video presentation is to review basic ideas of limits of sequences. So imagine we have a sequence. Our sequence name is x, it has values x1, x2, x3, and so on. We say that our sequence converges to c, which we write xk approaches c with an arrow, or we write the limit of my sequence value equals c. Either of those have a very specific meaning. It says that the value of our sequence, xk, has a distance from c, which is given by the absolute value of x minus c, that that distance is less than delta eventually, regardless of what delta greater than zero we have. The idea of eventually refers to the idea that no matter what delta we have, we can always find an integer n so that after that value of n, in other words, for the index greater than that integer n, the sequence distance from the value c is less than delta. So in the graphic, we have a, a sequence graphed. Along the x-axis, we have the index. Along the y-axis, we have the value of the sequence. And as you can see, this sequence is approaching the number 3. And so we would say this sequence has a limit of 3. x, k approaches 3, or the limit of x, k equals 3. Now, to be consistent with our later use of limits of functions, we could put k goes to infinity. So this is the idea of the sequence that we are talking about. The idea of the eventually is illustrated now with these red bars. I've chosen delta equals 1. And so my distance from my limit is 1. In either direction, my sequence has to be within 1 of my limit 3. What is the integer n? The integer n refers to the point after which my sequence is no longer outside of those bars. Forever after, eventually, my sequence stays between those two bars. So the first six points are inside the bars, and so here my integer n is 6. For all k greater than 6, the distance between my sequence value and 3 is less than 1. If I choose a smaller value of delta, so here my delta is a quarter, 0 0.25, I now have a much smaller value of delta. And so it takes much longer for me to, cr to cross the threshold. So it appears that after this line, my sequence stays between the lines. So eventually, in other words, the first 20 points look like they are either on or outside that line, but for any k greater than 20, my sequence distance from 3 is less than a quarter. And so this is what it means for a sequence to converge, that eventually, given any delta, my sequence is less than delta away from the limit. So here's an example sequence. My xn equals 5 plus 1 over 2n minus 3. Notice here my index is n instead of k. The index variable does not matter. There are three typical questions that focus on the concepts of limit, limits of sequences. The first is simply to find the limit. That's a calculational problem and doesn't really require a lot of work. The second is to state the formal definition of the limit, or the meaning of the limit statement that we found. This is usually basically just a memorization. The third possible question is to actually illustrate the limit definition, and this involves solving an inequality. So we will be going through each of these one at a time. The first question, the sequence has a limit. To find the limit, we're just going to look and say what happens. So we know that n is getting big, n is approaching infinity. So if I were to think about the parts of the formula, 
two n is doubling. So if n is counting one, two, three, two n is counting two, four, six. That's also growing to infinity. If I subtracted three, that'd be two, four, six, subtracting three each time. Notice that that sequence is still going to infinity. These would all be done in your head. Once you notice that 2n minus 3 is going to infinity, that tells you that it's reciprocal. 1 over 2n minus 3 goes to 0, because the reciprocal of an increasing sequence going to infinity is 0. Once you know that, we're basically done. 5 plus a sequence that goes to 0 goes to 5. And we're done. If the question is simply to find the limit of the sequence, our task is simply to show that the limit of our sequence, 5 plus 1 over the quantity 2n minus 3, has a value of 5. The work should include showing that you've correctly recognized that the denominator goes to infinity, the reciprocal goes to 0, so that 5 plus a sequence going to 0 goes to 5. The second typical question is being able to recall the actual definition of what the limit means. So first, let's review what was the limit statement. The actual statement that we're trying to show is to say that our sequence 5 plus 1 over 2n minus 3 has a limit of 5, which we write the limit of that sequence formula equals 5. That's what we're trying to state what it means. The definition has to do with that inequality with distance, and so we need to state it precisely. The informal approach is what we need to remember. The idea being that the distance between my sequence and the limit is less than delta eventually. And that this is true for any delta that's positive. To get full credit, we also need to explain what this eventually means. So the formal definition has to do with saying that given any delta greater than zero, there is an integer n so that the distance between my sequence and my value 5 is less than delta as long as or whenever my index is bigger than that n. To finish this off, I need to replace that xn with my formula, 5 plus 1 over 2n minus 3. The distance between my sequence and the number 5 is less than delta, whenever n, the index, is greater than my n. This is the formal definition of the limit statement that we were showing. The third question is to actually illustrate that we understand the definition by applying it. So here we're given a value of delta and so our task is to be able to find, so our task is to actually find the integer n. This is going to involve solving an inequality. The inequality we need to solve is that inequality that shows up in our definition. The distance between our sequence and our value of the limit has to be less than delta. So we'll replace the xn with our formula, 5 plus 1 over 2n minus 3. The limit was 5. So the distance between our sequence and our limit has to be less than 0.03. And we want to solve this for our index n. When I simplify the formula in absolute values, I get the absolute value of 2n minus 3 has to be less than 0 0.03. So whenever we have an inequality that involves absolute value is less than a number, that uh, inequality can be replaced by two inequalities. So that single inequality can be replaced by 1 over 2n minus 3 
is less than 0 0.03 and 1 over 2n minus 3 is greater than negative 0 0.03. So when I solve these inequalities, I'm going to have to solve them separately, and then we need to find out where the answers intersect or overlap. Now inequalities are a little trickier than equations, so let's, let's practice that really quickly. 1 over 2n minus 3 is less than 0 0.03. We don't really want to multiply by 2n minus 3 because n is a variable and that could actually mess up the order of our inequality. So what we do instead is we move everything to one side. 1 over 2n minus 3 minus 0 0.03 is less than 0. And now I find a common denominator. 1 minus 0 0.03 times 2n minus 3 over 2n minus 3 is less than 0. There is a root where 1 minus 0 0.03 times 2n minus 3 equals 0, which when you do the work is found to occur at 18 and a sixth. And there's also a single undefined point, or a discontinuity, where 2n minus 3, the denominator, equals 0, which happens at a single point, n equals 3 halves. And so the first inequality can be found using sign analysis, considering the points 3 halves, and 18 and a sixth, where I am 0 and undefined. And I now plug numbers in, in each of those intervals, and I can decide if I'm going to be positive or negative. So first, let's look at this interval far to the right. If I pick a number far to the right and I plug it in, on the top, I'll get a negative number. On the bottom, I get a positive number, so that when I simplify it, I get a negative number. If I pick a number between 1 and a half and 18 and a sixth, and I plug them in, on the top, I'll be getting a negative number. Sorry, I'll get a positive number now. On the bottom, I'll get a positive number, so that I get a positive number as my answer. If I choose a number less than 3 halves, on the top, I will get a positive number, but on the bottom I'll get a negative number. And so I have two parts to the first inequality. The first inequality has two pieces. If I solve the second inequality, finding a common denominator and adding it to the other side, I get the quantity 1 plus 0 0.03 times 2n minus 3, all over 2n minus 3, is greater than 0. This inequality again has a discontinuity at 3 halves. And it also has a root where the numerator equals 0, which when we solve it is at n equals negative 15 and a sixth. This time when I test the values by picking points, far to the right I get positive. In the middle I get negative and far to the left, I get positive again. For this inequality, I was solving for positive numbers. And so my inequality is everything down to 3 halves and everything after negative 15 and a sixth to the left. The intersection, which is what we need to do because we are solving an inequality that requires both of these to be true is going to be where these overlap. So from 18 and a sixth to the right, and negative 15 and a sixth to the left. However, we are interested in finding an integer n so that when n, my index, is bigger than this integer, 
we're guaranteed for the sequence to be true. So the only thing that matters on our inequality is what happens far to the right. In other words, we're interested in this piece far to the right where n is greater than 18 and a sixth. We need our index n to be greater than 18 and a sixth. The integer that we need to be bigger than is 18. And so my integer n is 18. The first 18 points cannot guarantee that we are within 0 0.03. For every index after that, we can.